so I'm going to go over the rules about what um, Medicaid's resource limits are. Medicaid has rules that are different if you are married versus you are single. And if you are single, I have really bad news for you when it comes to Medicaid's rules. Indeed, it is an impoverishment program. That's not to say we can't help you from spending down all your money. You certainly can, but it's not as easy as if you were one of a married couple because a married couple, Medicaid's rules are far different. So let's talk about what the resource standards are. When it comes to income, how much income can you have and qualify for Medicaid? And I have to uh, tell you, income is rarely a disqualifier. If your income is $20,000 a month, you don't care about Medicaid. You can pay for your $14,000 a month nursing home, but that's a rare case when anybody has that high of income and they're looking at long-term care. So let's talk about what Medicaid's rules are in the state of Washington when it comes to income limits. When it comes to income, if you're in a nursing home, your income basically should be less or has to be less than what the private pay rate is, okay? Private pay rate's 14,000. Your income's less than that, then you meet the income standard. Not a problem. Medicaid pays for care, not only in a nursing home, but in less restrictive settings. For example, Medicaid will pay for care in your own home. Medicaid will pay for care in an adult family home and in an assisted living facility or a memory care facility. So those Medicaid programs in Washington state are typically under what we call the COPES program. Uh, community Options Program Entry System. Nobody calls it that, we call it COPES. Under the COPES program, let's say you are going to an adult family home and your income, here's what the current standard is in uh, 2024, your income cannot exceed per month $10,387. You qualify under the income level, single or couple, you qualify. So that's really not a big barrier. If you are looking for um, a pro, uh, to qualify under what's called the Community First Choice, which is another program, it's a really important program because it doesn't have a transfer penalty. We'll get into that. The income limit for you at a care facility is 2,829. Or if you get care in your home, it's 943, so it's a pretty low level. Why I'm even talking about Community First Choice or CFC program is because, remember we're talking about how not to spend down all your money. The Community First Choice program does not have a transfer penalty. For the most part, Medicaid says, hey, if you've got so much money, you're giving it away, we're not gonna provide benefits to you. Makes sense. It's called the five-year look back rule. So we have to be very aware of, no, don't give away your assets unless you're doing so with a strategy, a plan in mind. But the Community First Choice Program does not have that penalty period. So sometimes when we're working with clients and they wanna you know, qualify for Medicaid, um, one of the first things we look at is what is your income? Because if their income is within those limits, of 943 for care at home, 2,829 for care in a uh, assisted living or adult family home, they'll qualify for benefits, even though perhaps they have a hundred or 200 or more thousand dollars, which they wanted to go to their kids and not spend it all down. So they give it away and they can do so because Medicaid under the CFC program will pay for their care. So that is a very exceptional program. And it's something that we as elder law attorneys doing Medicaid planning will always be looking for depending on what the client situation is.